The United States Air Force has a new strategic long-range stealth bomber, and it's built in Palmdale. The military says its destructive power is unmatched. It was unveiled tonight in a ceremony that looked like a Hollywood production. It has quite literally been shrouded in secrecy. America's newest long-range stealthy strategic bomber, the B-21 Raider, unveiled at Northrop Grumman's Plant 42 in Palmdale. The Air Force controlled the cameras at the unveiling, so this is the only view you can get. Even the cost of the B-21 has not been made public, although it's estimated at a staggering $750 million apiece. What do the taxpayers get for their money? A weapon designed to deter aggression or respond to it. Every time and everywhere. That's what America does. Sign a bill that will prevent a major rail strike after the Senate passed a resolution requiring rail workers to accept a tentative labor agreement. And the November jobs report that is out today will provide a snapshot of the market, which is expected to show slow but strong growth. In a new climate change report, the United Nations says the world is heading in the wrong direction. The report says there's a 48% chance that global temperatures will rise by 1.5 degrees Celsius over the next five years. Data shows a 93% chance that the Earth will experience record-breaking heat over the same period. Now a plan to beam electricity, electricity wirelessly from space to power millions of homes could be edging a step closer. The European Space Agency is to consider funding a three-year study called Solaris to see if having huge solar farms in space could work and be cost-effective. Straight from Climate and Economy, December 3rd, 2022, half the world's democracies are in decline. This from France 24. We're seeing extraordinarily severe headwinds for democracy now, intensified by political fallout from economic crises that started with the pandemic and economic consequences of the war in Ukraine. International IDEA Secretary General Kevin Casas Zamora told AFP, Casas Zamora singled out the U.S is particularly worrying. I'm very concerned by what we're seeing in the United States. The country faces political polarization, institutional dysfunction, and threats to civil liberties, according to the report. Hmm. Sounds like a lovely old time in the good old states of America. What's causing the global food crisis? No, it's not just the pandemic or Ukraine war. Financial speculation is making the crisis worse. With soaring food prices, threatened food security, large food trading firms are profiting. These companies bet on the direction of food prices by storing or trading substantial amounts of goods. Half the world's fertilizer is warning of shortages ahead of supplies from Russia and Belarus. You know this spells trouble. Uh, Russia and Belarus are enormous exporters of fertilizer. Their export challenges in the region, that's certainly going to have material impacts on the market and your dinner table. Factories in Europe and Asia are struggling in November due to weakling, weakening global demand. Stagflation will become the dominant theme of the decade. Consider where we are now in every major, major economic block with currency system that is used as reserves, most notably US, UK, EU, and Japan. We have reached levels where Growth has stalled. This growth stalled before the 2020 lockdowns, by the way. Debt has become, begun to be unsustainable. High debts and stagflation have set the stage for the mother of all financial crises. This from Market Watch. Unlike the 2008 crisis in the early months of COVID-19, simply bailing out private and public agents with loose macro policies would pour more gasoline on the inflationary fire. That means there will be a hard landing, a deep protracted recession on top of a severe financial crisis. Blackstone withdraws $125 billion in property fund as investors rush to exit. U.S. home buyers at high cost areas could get $1 million mortgages with just 3% deposits after caps for federally backed loans raised. 
Um, mortgage costs now 67% of income in Canada. Oh, Canada. No presents, avoiding relatives, Christmas, and cost of living crisis in the UK. People just can't afford to do things. Could Britain be facing a general strike this winter? Likely so. There's coordinated action. 1.5 million workers could get, again be on the picket lines by Christmas. European, European funds suffer worse outflows since 2008 crises. This just keeps going on. Risk of power shortages increased in Finland due to uncertainty of domestic production. Thinking of you, Jacko. Jarko. And foreign imports. The Finnish Energy Authority said on Thursday, uh, Estonian PM repeats potential electricity blackout warnings. Uh, Switzerland could limit the use of electric vehicles in case of electricity supply shortages. What are we going to do when we need electric vehicles to electrify the fleet and we don't have energy. French grid operator warns of power cuts this winter. Not looking good. J Japan battles looming energy crunch with conservation. And officials fear complete doomsday scenario for drought-stricken Colorado River. The first sign of serious trouble for the drought-stricken American Southwest could be a whirlpool. It could happen if the surface of Lake Powell, a man-made reservoir along the Colorado River that's already a quarter of its former size, drops another 38% down the concrete face of the 710-foot Glen Canyon Dam. At that point, the surface would be approaching the tops of eight underwater openings that allow river water to pass through the hydroelectric dam. The normally placid Lake Powell Nation's second largest revolution could suddenly transform into something resembling a funnel with water circling in the openers. If that happens, the massive turbines that generate electricity for 4.5 million people would have to shut down after nearly 60 years of use or risk destruction from air bubbles. Such an outcome, known as minimum power tool, was once un unfathomable. Now the federal government projects that day could come as soon as July. The Northern Hemisphere summer of this year, 2022, of unprecedented extremes right across the Northern Hemisphere. Today, 42% of Europe is still in drought and 60% of the US is still in drought. Clearly, we have no more time left. We have a communications problem, clearly, because what we've heard is terrifying, and yet the world seems to be very good at carrying on as usual. I'm going to speak about that communications problem right now. Because just as political support for climate action is growing, so political resistance to climate action is also growing. I'm sharing this information for the first time today. The use of the hashtag climate scam has exploded since July of this year, from never exceeding more than 3,000 tweets in any month up to June 2022. It's been used 70,000 to 100,000 times per month in the four months since. Compare that to the hashtag climate justice, which has averaged about 30,000 tweets per month for the last two years and almost hit 100,000 unique tweets in the month of COP26 in Glasgow this time last year, what with all the world's media attention. But now climate scam is being used two and a half times for every climate justice tweet throughout the last four months. We're still not anywhere close to doing that. We still hold these uh, conferences, these COP conferences, and uh, you know, are we really making any progress? Um, it's questionable. So, you know, the number I look at as a, from a science point of view is the greenhouse gas uh, concentrations. So once again, um, we're setting new records in uh, greenhouse gas levels of, both, of CO2, in the atmosphere of methane, of uh, nitrous oxide. And, you know, lately uh, scientists have been making a lot more noise about the methane levels because methane levels are just shooting up, they're accelerating. And perhaps the hydroxyl sink, which removes methane from the atmosphere, is maybe weakening. Uh, we're not sure, but there, there's a frightening rise of, of methane concentrations in the atmosphere. So all of these powerful greenhouse gases are trapping tremendous amounts of heat. Well, we have a stark warning this morning from the United Nations. The UN's Global Humanitarian Overview estimates that nearly 340 million people will need humanitarian relief next year. The UN is pointing to a convergence of dire crises, including the war in Ukraine and the world food shortage.